Okay, continuing with the logo, we just went over how to outline strokes so that everything is a fill path, even these, these circles, even if they're created with the stroke tool. Now I want to create this slide. So I copied one of my rounded rectangles. I'm using the large selection tool, the black arrow. And that allows me to transform this at the angle I want. Now, how can I get that highlight cut out of it? Right? That little sliver. That little sliver is different than, well, it depends. There's a few ways. What I can do is I can make it as a stroke. So swap it here and then increase the stroke size. And then just like I did with the circles, you know, play it down. But I don't think I'm going to get the result I want that way with this. Instead, I have to do what I did with this shape. I have to cut one shape out of the other shape. So I'm going to make a duplicate. Uh, just Command C, Command V. Sh I'm going to change this fill color to white just so I can see it. And then I'm going to shrink it down. Actually, I won't even hold down Shift. I'll let it distort. Come on. Well, I want it to move in for me. There we go. I'm going to shrink it down and move it in kind of like that. See how thin I want it, exactly where I want to place it, get its angle exactly right. Use my arrow keys to nudge it into place. So this is when I want an uneven edge around a shape, right? The circle, I use the stroke and then outline stroke to get a perfectly even line weight. This has an uneven line weight. It's thicker on these edges than it is on the sides. So now I need to select with one of the selection tools, hold down shift and select both overlapping paths. Now to cut the, the path on top out of the path on the bottom, I use the pathfinder tool and I use what is called the minus front. Now to find that pathfinder tool, you can go to window and pathfinder and I recommend you drag it so it's visible on your screen. So you want to see your layers and you want to see your Pathfinder tool. And I can turn off my sketch and just see. And I like that. I'm getting a lots, lots of little pops of negative space. And yet when I squint, I don't lose any of the, the black. So I don't want to make my lines so thin that when I squint, you can't see them. Because logos, good logos should be versatile and really work in different scales. Okay, now... <laughs> I'm going to duplicate that shape, Command-C, Command-V, just because it's at the exact right angle. And then I'm going to hold down Shift and make it bigger so it keeps the exact right angle. Because if I don't hold down Shift, the angle is going to change on it. And that's really frustrating, but these diagonals are really important to my design. So I'm always going to hold down shift and then to get that size. Nice. Okay. Now this is a complex shape. How can I move these anchor points and get it to work? So if I use the small selection tool, I'll see the anchor points that are there. And then I can use the minus pen, the delete anchor point tool, and just get rid of those inside anchors. Right. And now, how can I see the shape that I want? It's being covered up. I'm going to use transparency, which is like opacity in Photoshop. So I go to Window and Transparency, 
and I need to select the path, it will show it at 100%. I want to take it down to about 50%, just so I can get its shape. And I'm going to use the Add Anchor Point tool. And I'm going to add an anchor point right here on the path. And I'm going to add an anchor point right here on the path. Now, if I delete the other anchor points, this path is a closed path. So it's going to automatically revert to those anchors that I just made and give me that really harsh shape, that wedge shape. I can turn this back to now 100%. But I have to select it first and then turn it to 100%. Now I have to decide if I like that or if I want to round that out a little bit. Because whenever you get a corner, you have the option to round it. And since these corners are rounded, it seems like I should round these a little bit. But if I just click it without uh, clicking the anchor point directly, it's going to round all the edges evenly. And I don't want it to do that, though it gives me some interesting shapes. Instead, I want to click right on the anchor point. So I'll zoom in so you can see this. I have to click off of it. I have to hover over it with the small white arrow selection tool the direct selection tool, and then I can just round that corner individually. I'm just going to do it really slightly. Same thing with this one. I'm just going to just round that a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I could probably get around with rounding this top one a little bit more. So what rounding does is it splits the point into two anchor points. So it's a difficult process. And now if I want to do it more than I did originally, I have to go back to Command Z until it was just one point so that I can round it individually. But then I have to do this one again too. Okay, and I like that. Now I can take this shape, copy it, paste it. I'm doing a lot of this. And I'm going to right click it, and I'm going to transform and reflect. This is like flipping horizontal. You can flip it in different ways, angle it in different ways. And I was curious if that would get me closer to this shape that I need. And I can also just use the large selection tool and rotate it by hand. And if I hold down shift, it will lock it to the angle that it started, which is very helpful here. Then I can shrink it. And then let's rotate it again using shift. Yeah, I don't think there's any easy way to get that, that exact angle. Because it's not on a horizontal and it's not on 45. I'm just going to have to eyeball it. But that looks even with that surface. Okay, now I can play with the anchor points again. Let's delete some, just make it really simple. So I basically have two anchor points here to play with. If I want to make them straights, I can use the Convert Anchor Point tool and turn them both into straight points. And then I'm going to use the Small Selection tool and move them to make the shape that I want. something kind of like this. And now I want to round those corners. So I'm trying to line it up with that angle. So now I select that individual anchor and I can round that corner. Select just that individual angle. You first have to click off of it, then hover and then click on. Just like that. 
and you see how it's just a little wonky right there? It's because there's two anchors. So I'm going to shift click on one. Let's try the other one and move them on top of each other. So that I can then smooth out that curve using the handles. And that shape looks more reasonable. Getting there. Using the, the pen tool and all of these options for anchor points, modifying anchor points, deleting anchor points, adding anchor points, can take make any shape that you start with and then modify it. What I haven't done in this demo for this logo is create non-shape-based images. And that's coming because this shape is unique enough that there's really no tool to start with. But I am going to start with this shape just because it's at the right angle. So I'm going to hit Command C, Command V, give me a duplicate of it, keep it at that angle. I need to scale it up so that the height's right, but really it's just that bottom edge and that top edge I need. So I'm going to hold down Shift. If I hold down Shift and Option, it will grow from the center and it won't get away from me quite as quickly. So try to get the top and the bottom. Something close to that, right? Now let me take its transparency down so I can see the shape I want it to be. But what that shape gives me is the angle of the bottom and the angle of the top. Now it's tricky. I want that angle to be here. I need all these angles to be really exact. So I'm going to add anchor points using the pin tool, using the add anchor point tool. The shortcut for that is just the plus sign. I'm going to add an anchor point here. Then I'm going to add another anchor point. Then I'm going to add another, well, I can keep some of them, but let's just add a third. Now I'll use my small selection tool and I'm going to modify these anchor points by clicking off and then hovering over and then clicking and then moving it down. Holding down shift will lock the angle. So these are now parallel. And then I can move this anchor point. Move it down. I like to keep all my anchor points straight when I'm just building a shape for the, in the first place. So I can use the convert anchor point tool under the pin tool to turn this into a straight on both sides. Or I'll hit Command Z. I can use my small selection tool, grab the handles that remain, and push those handles into the anchor point. And that will convert them into straights. But it's safest to use the convert anchor point tool so you just erase any hint of a curve. I can convert all of these to straights just for the time being and then round the corners later. And I can delete any that aren't that helpful. Right. So getting a basic shape of it first. And it kind of like puppet warp and, and placing your anchors by having these these points, these aren't going to move now. As I select the other anchors. To move into place. Whoops, but I got to be careful with this bottom one. I got to hold down shift so that angle is preserved. Okay, now how do I get this curve? I'm going to add some anchor points on the ex existing path. 
then I'm going to delete 